Welcome to Space Time with Dave. I am Dave, and this is a noise reduction tutorial in PixInsight. I wanted to do a more detailed video on how I approach reducing noise in my deep space astrophotography images. Um, looking at here is my image of NGC 7331, which is this very nice spiral galaxy here. Uh, this is known as the Deerlick group. And over here is its buddy, uh, Stevens Quintet. So this was shot, this is about three hours total integration time, uh, shot with my Canon 7D Mark II, which does an excellent job um, uh, with noise. Um, but we do need, usually in most of my images, I do need a, uh, some noise reduction to uh, get a nice looking image like this. Um, uh, one thing I want to emphasize is that um, what we're doing is noise reduction, not elimination. I, I don't think it's realistic to think that any software control can, any software tool can fix uh, something like noise, kind of like if you've ever done um, software image stabilization, Sometimes it can do a pretty good job, somewhere between a pretty good job and a really good job, but it's never quite as good as actually having the camera be stable. So uh, likewise here, I don't think noise reduction can do quite um, quite what a, you know, a properly cooled astronomy camera can do, but we can do a pretty good job and we can make the images look much better. So that's my final image and I'm just going to minimize that and so just to show you where we were coming from uh, that is the stacked version and this is a single exposure so if you just kind of want to see what the a single exposure from the 7D Mark II uh, can do so this is um, 300 seconds 1600 ISO and sensor temperature 19 C so uh, you can see all the all the hot pixels and things in there, and um, a pretty nice for a single image. And the noise really is, you know, it's really a fine grain pattern in here. Um, and so that's that's a single image, and I don't care. So here's my stacked and calibrated, um, and I had to do a little bit of background subtraction to get a nice even flat field. And so. Um, so now if we zoom in, all those hot pixels are fixed, but we still have a lot of noise in here and we can make it look a lot better. Um, so the tool that I use for noise reduction, oh, first of all, before I get into that, I, I, I should mention that you wanna do your noise reduction on the linear image. So this is just the auto stretch um, showing us the, the data in here. And the reason you wanna do your noise reduction before uh, stretching the histogram is that if I did a histogram stretch right now, I would be stretching all the noise along with the detail. So let's eliminate, uh, or I'm sorry, reduce the noise as much as possible um, before doing the stretching. So this is still a linear linear image. Um, so the tool that I use for uh, noise reduction, there are many, many tools in this great program, uh, PixInsight. Um, I used to use the Atrue's Wavelet Transform, but it's come to my attention that that is an older version. And um, so what we want to use now is the multi-scale linear transform. So this is a, uh, could be an intimidating tool. I know the first time I saw a tool like this, I kind of just went, oh, I don't think I want to try to mess with this. Um, knowing what, um, what, uh, parameters to use in these various settings there's no real you know tool hints to help you with that so um, what you can see what it does is this separates the image into wavelet layers these are wavelet layers and if you aren't familiar with wavelet layers what what wavelet layers do is separate the image into um, different layers of pixel detail. So well, there's a really cool script to help with that. Uh, script image analysis and extract wavelet layers. So I'm just gonna run this script. 
and um, my target image is here and the number of layers I'm gonna reduce that to four because that's what I'm gonna use in my multi-scale linear transform tool and the scaling function I'll do the 3 by 3 linear interpolation because that's what I'm gonna be using over here and just hit OK and this takes a minute and there it is so actually less than a minute that was pretty quick <laughs> so I'll uh, minimize that and um, so what this did is now it's showing me the various wavelet layers and so um, if I kind of move those over see layer 3 layer 2 and so what you're seeing is detail that makes up uh, that is made up by different uh, number or level of pixels. So in layer layer zero, which will correspond to layer one in our um, our multi-scale linear transform tool. Um, so this is where layer zero and layer one is where you'll find most of the noise. So if I zoom in on these, you can see here's all the pattern, all this texture from the background noise and uh, you can see it here in layer 2 and layer 3 but you'll notice as the layers increase the more blurred and less uh, detailed that noise is so that's telling us that the noise exists on uh, layers 0, 1, and 2 or the first mainly the first three layers of the of the image so this is, um, uh, you don't have to do this with all of your images, and I, I generally don't, but th the reason I wanted to do this is it, it's something that I recommend, um, like an exercise to go through to help familiarize yourself with what the multi-scale linear transform tool is doing. So um, let's just play around with, uh, um, let's play around with layer one here, and I'm gonna make a I'll make a preview that's mostly background and so this is layer this layer 01 would correspond to layer 2 in the tool so let's just turn on noise reduction and leave it at default and let's just run it and see what it does Okay, there you go. So, um, Control Shift Z to redo and undo. Um, uh, by the way, I find that undoing and redoing, kind of flashing the image back and forth like this, is um, a very quick and easy way to see the effect that um, your changes are having. So this is this is my preferred method of seeing uh, what it is I'm doing. Um, so anyways, so we can see that the noise reduction, it definitely reduced the noise, um, but there's still a lot of pattern in here, a lot of texture. So maybe I need to turn on uh, layer one noise reduction and run it again. And now look at that. Now the noise is almost, I mean, is almost completely gone. Um, and so there's still some kind of Oh, I don't know, squiggliness, right? So that's, but that's made up of all the detail now in there is made up of a bunch of pixels versus the noise, um, the majority of the noise, which makes up, you know, just smaller groupings of four, two, or three pixels. Uh, now you can see, like, here's a big group of pixels. So let's try adding noise reduction to a higher layer and see what that does. Now, I mean, there's almost no, no no noise at all in there. That's before, and that's after. So it does weird. Uh, there's lots of weird artifacting that is happening, and uh, you'll see that in a minute when we go to the real image. But the point of this exercise is um, to see, and I, I encourage you to do this. Um, you know, use the script to separate these wavelet layers and 
just experiment with what different parameters do to different levels of detail. And um, boy, if we could take an image that's that noisy and turn it into that, that's kind of like almost a dream come true. Um, and we won't be able to go that far without leaving artifacts, and you can kind of see this ringing that's happening. That's something that I'm going to show um, that we really want to avoid. So, um, But the, the, the point of this exercise is just to play around with multi-scale linear transform and see what different parameters on different layers do to you know different amounts of texture, which is what you're trying to eliminate. So, okay, enough of that, and I don't need these, so I'm just going to close them. Um, that was just an experiment and I'll reset that and kind of hide it for now. Okay, so back to our, our stacked image. Um, so now at this point I would have done um, my, it's been aligned and calibrated and I've done a little bit of background subtraction because I had a little bit of background glow and I've also um, done color calibration and now it's time to do noise reduction. So. Um, one thing that I want to do is I don't want to apply noise reduction to the high signal to noise ratio areas of the image. So these, anything that's bright, the stars, you know, that's going to be high signal to noise. So there's not going to be a lot of noise in there. And you can see towards the edge of the galaxy here, there is some, but for the most part, um, uh, you don't want to apply noise reduction to the, um, brighter areas of your image. So to do that, to, to, uh, so to protect those areas, we're going to use a, a luminance mask. So we'll just extract that. And now in order for this to work, the luminance mask does need to be non-linear. So um, I really quickly need to use the screen transfer function and the histogram transformation tools. And so I'll just stretch that and then apply those settings to the histogram transformation, reset the auto stretch, and now I'll open up the real-time preview. So um, uh, when we're making the mask, anything that's white is going to be, end up being masked. Anything that's black is not. So currently right now what the auto stretch did is it, um, it stretched a lot of this background glow. And I don't want to protect the background, but I want to denoise the background. So right now, um, that's not a mask that I want to use. What I want to do is, and I can bring up the preview there. Um, so I actually want to crush the background. I want to crush all this gray um, because I want that to be not protected at all when we do the noise reduction. So I'm just going to grab the slider here and just keep crushing those background out. Now I don't want to go too far and end up doing something like that. Um, so I still want to preserve the detail in the diffraction spikes and the fuzzy detail there. So, and you can see I've got some some little bit of glow going on down here. Now this could be this could be some IFN. I'm not sure if there's really IFN in that area of sky or not. Um, but I'm going to just kind of find an area that's you know somewhere in there I, I do want to apply a little bit of noise reduction to the edge of the galaxy because you'll remember there was some some noise there um, but that right there I think is pretty pretty good I, I'm gonna go with that so I will apply that to my what will become my mask and then I don't need that anymore and I don't need the screen transfer function so now to apply that as a mask I just drag it to my image and then minimize, don't need it. And now we want to, um, uh, so now when it's in mask mode, everything that's red is protected. So we want to invert the mask, uh, control shift I to invert the mask. And so now you can see my background is not very well protected, which is what we want. And, um, but the stars and things are. So now I'm going to make a preview, and my preview I like to I like to include some some of the some of the object mostly background because that's what we're denoising, but I like to include some of the object um, also to just to make sure that my noise reduction isn't isn't screwing up my uh, you know my object. 
Um, okay, so now we want to, I, I just want to hide the mask. So control K, you can toggle the mask on or off. And you know you still have a mask applied because the, um, you have this brown preview, brown and yellowish brown. That means there's a mask applied. Okay, so multi-scale linear transform. So we're going to do noise reduction in two separate steps. First, I do um, the luminance noise, and then I'll come back and do chrominance noise. And you'll see the difference um, as, as we as we go through this. So um, luminance noise is all this is all the the blocky texture in here, but the chrominance noise is the the colored text the colored kind of texture. So you can see there's sort of like purples and blues and greens and there's usually some reds in there mostly I'm seeing green and kinda of blue in this image um, um, so removing that chrominance noise is really important when we go to saturate the image because we don't want to saturate the noise that'll just make it look extra noisy so uh, my target is gonna be luminance for now and I'm gonna do four layers and um, so now start applying noise reduction. So you remember most of the noise lives in layers one and two. So um, what I can, what I like to do usually is do one layer at a time and tweak the parameters to get the best results and then go and add. You're going to do multiple layers. So um, one thing I like to do is turn the amount down to like 0.33 and then do three iterations. So uh, according to the PixInsight documentation, this is preferred over doing just a full amount of one with one iteration. So we'll do three iterations and 0.33 and run that. Um, an improvement in noise, control shift Z, remember to undo. So uh, definitely an improvement, um, but not not there yet. Um, so you'll notice it did a really good job of, well, I guess I shouldn't say a really good job, but um, so the sort of high contrast texture is now smoothed over. Um, but there's still a lot of texture there, so that is noise in a higher layer. So let's do um, layer two. We'll just turn it on and we'll do point three three and three iterations again. Throw that in there. Okay, so now we're starting to see some good progress here. So that's before, very grainy, and now it's very much smoothed over. Um, but there's still there's still texture in here. There's still you know blocks that kind of look like Tetris pieces now instead of just grain. So let's add. Let's just turn on layer three. Do the same thing. So now um, we're starting to get to, to where it's going to be too much noise reduction. And so that looks good, but if you look carefully, and especially when I zoom out, you can see it more, that the background starts to look a little muddy. And um, it's kind of hard to see here, um, but what you're looking for is you'll start to notice kind of like grouping, where, or you'll have like halos around your bright areas around your stars so that's before that's after and you know that doesn't look too bad overall right now but now let's add let's just turn on layer four and watch what happens okay so that's with layer four noise reduction turned on and now notice these these very weird halos around the objects around the stars here so obviously that's no good um, so uh, let's turn it down and so this is where this is one area where I notice a lot of people doing too much noise reduction on these higher layers is you'll start to see these artifacts show up around the stars and the overall effect is that the background ends up looking kind of muddy and um, so here's kind of a good illustration of that um, I turn the uh, threshold way down on layer four, so it looks better than that last time. But if you notice in the in these areas here, um, 
the stars start to have these groups around them. And so that means we've got too much noise reduction on these higher levels. I, I can kind of see it right here when I before and after. And it's almost sort of like like tunnels through these groups of stars or um, like a, um, uh, imagine like an ant, an ant farm, you know, where you can see all the, all the various tunnels going through. And that's, that's kind of what, what we end up with when we do too much noise reduction. So I'm going to turn the threshold um, way down. And I think I'm just going to do like 0.25. Remember, most of the noise exists on the first two, three layers. So layer four really doesn't need much at all. And so I'll do 0.5 and leave the amount at one. And then layer three, I'm going to actually reduce this a little bit. Uh, I think I'm going to do 0.2 and run it again because I think there was a bit much on layer three. Okay, so that is um, a better result. Um, and I like, you see, I keep zooming in and out here. And the reason I zoom out is to get, you know, kind of an overview, an overall look at what the background is looking like because I want to avoid weird texturing or muddying. Um, and this still looks maybe a little bit muddy. Maybe that's too much on layer three still. So maybe I'll back that down. And so right now I'm just, you know, fine tuning and I think I can do even more on layers one and two. I think I can get away with that. And um, so let's try that again. Okay, so I think this is pretty good. I think this is, is going to be where kind of about the best that I can do, uh, at least with this tool on this image. And it's, and it's pretty good. I mean, if I go before and then after, uh, a very smooth look and not too far from what you get from a much more expensive camera. Um, uh, and so that's pretty nice. Um, you know, you can spend a lot more time fine tuning these layers, maybe do just one layer at a time. And, um, you know, uh, with, a, with a lot of these tools, a lot of these images, it just depends on how much time you want to spend on it. So um, that's about as much time as I want to spend on it, especially because I've done this image uh, several times. So I'll go back to my image, my full image, and apply it. Okay, so my image has been noise noise reduced, at least in the luminance. We're going to come back and do the chrominance now. Um, but uh, it's a good idea to, um, you know, look at your a whole image here. And I can go to my History Explorer, and I can just kind of toggle before and after to see the effect. And I like to zoom out and, you know, just look, just examine the image and look for artifacts, look for that weird muddying of the background or texturing of the back or, um, you know, grouping or tunneling. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what you want to call it, but um, uh, look for, look for halos around the stars. And I don't see any of that. It all looks pretty good. Um... I'm pleased with that, but there's still chrominance noise. If you zoom in here, I can still see the the overall noise has been much reduced, but you still see all this color in the background. So you see some purple and like some red and maybe some green. So that's all chrominance noise, and that's really easy to remove. So I'm going to go back to my preview and back to my multi-scale linear transform tool and reset it. And I'm going to change the target to chrominance. So we're only going to noise reduce the chrominance. And for this I like to use seven layers and I don't have a really good reason as to why I use seven layers for the chrominance instead of four other than I saw somebody else do it in a tutorial, um, which is a really bad example, So, um, but it works and um, so I'll stick with what works for now. Um, so for these usually what I do is just turn on noise reduction for the first three layers, just kind of leave it default and um, uh, yeah, let's just run it like that. Okay, so now uh, this is good. This did produce some artifacting that I wanted to uh, wanted to address. 
So before, let's go Control Shift Z before after, and notice how the background it looks like a rainbow here. And if I do it after, now it's a nice gray scale. But um, uh, take a look at the stars and watch carefully. Let's see if I can find a group of stars that you know will in particular or particularly show this. I think these ones right here. So watch before, that's before and after, before, after, before, after. So you see this like purple haloing going on before, after. I don't really see, you just kind of see multicolored around it. And then when I do after, now it looks purple. And you can see it over here really well. So this is an example of the artifacting that I was talking about that kind of muddies the background. Although in this instance, it's just chrominance noise and not regular noise. So that means I have too much noise reduction on layer three. So let's um, let's play with layer three and remove and lower that threshold until we are satisfied that I don't have this artifacting going on. So before after before after mm, I don't know maybe a little bit it's better I think than it was before, but I think there's still a little bit much there. So I think what I'll do at this point then is just bring the amount down to like maybe 0.75. And um, yeah, let's try that. For after, these stars look pretty good. I don't see much change in those those pixels around there. Uh, after, and so, but this this is nice and uh, you know grayscale. The background should be kind of grayscale, I think. You know, um, so let's come over here before after. And yeah, I think that's that's looking pretty good. Maybe I'll try and add a little bit on layer four, but bring the threshold down to like 0.5, and we'll do 0.75. These numbers are kind of arbitrary. Uh, just it's just that they're um, you know they should be, make sense relative to each other. So if I'm at one here, then I probably want to be at 0.5 here. Um, the the strategy is usually to um, have the threshold decreasing as the layer increases. Okay, so I think this is where I want to be. Yeah, maybe I have a little bit of purple fringing going on there. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty good. Um, yeah, so you know, looking around the image, looking at groups of stars, you know, looking at my object is a good idea. Control Shift Z, undo, redo. So notice, you can definitely see in the edge of the, you know, these will be blue pixels when it's color, when it's colorized, when it's the saturation's increased. But now that that chrominance noise is gone, that will look much nicer. Um, yeah, so I'm happy with that. I'll go back to my image and I will apply the chrominance noise reduction. Okay, so now at this point, noise reduction is finished. I'll kill my preview and remove uh, mask, uh, remove the mask. And uh, so now at this point, now that the noise, reduce, noise is re reduced, I would go and do my uh, nonlinear uh, stretching. That would be the that would be the next step in my normal workflow. Um, but I won't cover that here. I just wanted to cover the noise reduction, and I think uh, I think I did a pretty good job. I like the I like the way this this image uh, looks. Um, the background's not perfect, um, but it's pretty darn good for a fifteen hundred dollar camera, uh, especially when you compare it to the um, you know the astronomy specific cameras that can be. Four thousand dollars or more. So here's the uh, my final result, and you can see my background is you know it's a little textured. It's not perfect, um, but it looks pretty good. Um, and like I said, for a fifteen hundred dollar camera that also is amazing at shooting stills, um, the seven D Mark II does a pretty darn good job. And um, you know, so those are able to get images like this. So uh, okay, well, that's it. Um, there are a lot of tools for denoising in PixInsight. PixInsight is really a, a should be really thought of as a toolbox. I mean, look at all these tools, and um, 
you know, what works for me may not work for you and vice versa. So I'm definitely interested in, um, you know, learning some new techniques for noise reduction, or maybe you have some better information, or, you know, maybe you're smarter than me and understand these parameters a little better than I than I do. Uh, notice there's a lot of stuff that I didn't even, I don't even touch in here. Um, so um, I, I'm definitely open to suggestions, and um, but hopefully uh, this helps some people out. Um, one of my main uh, sort of beefs with uh, tutorials that I've seen is uh, oftentimes the tutor will just um, will just throw in some numbers and then run it without any explanation as to what's going on. And maybe it's because I didn't feel like making a 15 or 20 minute video about just about noise reduction like this. And, or maybe they assumed that no one would sit through a video about noise reduction. Um, but, uh, so here it is. Um, I've done a lot of experimenting to, um, be able to get to where I am. So, um, hopefully that was helpful to you and, uh, let me know, hit, uh, subscribe. I hope to have many more tutorials, uh, in the future. So thanks a lot. And you just have a wonderful day.